Good morning, YouTube. It's Ju Dash Eyes. Welcome to my channel. Lovely Saturday here in Orlando, Florida. As you can see, the sky is so beautiful. No rain clouds and nothing like that. I think it rained last night, but it's a beautiful day here. I hope it's a beautiful day wherever you all are. And I hope you folks get up and get out and try to enjoy it. Those of you that have to go shopping, do your laundry, do a little exercise, do a little walking, whatever your heart's desire. Just get up and get out there. Believe you me, it's another day, people. We live to see another day. Thank God Almighty for waking us up this morning. I sure thank him every morning that I wake up. And I feel so great. I feel great every day, but today I feel even greater. You know what I'm saying? I have so much energy in me, so much robust, no aches or pain. Thank God for that. I feel great. I feel so good. Oh my God. Let me, let me send some of it to you. For those of you that don't feel good this morning, here, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving you some of mine. Not all of it, but some. Don't waste it. Don't let it get away from you. Take it and feel as good as I do. You hear me? That's right. And you must always smile, no matter what it is. Always smile. It's so funny. The other day I was watching this. I was watching several YouTubers. And oh my God, the things they were saying and doing. It was so freaking funny. I was just laughing. I laughed so hard. My stomach started to hurt. My granddaughter said, Grandma, what are you watching that is so funny that got you laughing like that? Oh my God, it was so loud, my laughter. It was hard and loud. I hadn't laughed like that in a while. But sometimes when I see something that's funny, I have to let it all out. You know what I'm saying? It just comes out. Thank God I wasn't outside or on the bus or something. Because people would have been looking at me like I was crazy. But guess what? Do you think I care what they think? No. Because joy, people, Joy is what makes the world go round. People don't realize that. You have to have joy in your heart, joy in your soul. That's right. So laughing out loud doesn't mean you're crazy. It's a good thing. Yeah, some crazy people, they laugh out loud. But you ever, you ever um, thought... Maybe something funny came into their mind and that's why they was laughing out loud. It doesn't mean that they're crazy. They just have joy in their heart, joy in their soul. Just because they might be locked in a mental institution or they were in there and now they're out. It doesn't mean that they're crazy. Because a lot of folks out here that you think is crazy, they more sane than you. To be honest with you, they are more sane than you. And because they might have went into the institution or is being treated by psychiatrists, that doesn't mean they're crazy. They just had a little situation that was going on with them. So they had to go take care of that situation. You know what I'm saying? So that doesn't mean that they're all crazy now. No, they're not. Because the smartest person out here, they're nuts too. People say I'm crazy, but I know I'm not crazy. 
I don't have nothing on paper stating that I'm crazy. So, a little depression or anxiety or PTSD or schizo or um, whatever you want to call it. They say it's crazy, but it's not crazy. You're not crazy. You know exactly what you're doing. You know exactly what you're saying. You just want people to think you're crazy. And being diagnosed from a doctor, well, they're the ones that actually come out and say you're crazy because they diagnose you. But some folks, they have PTSD, like myself. And mine is not from being in the military, going through war or whatever. Mine was childhood trauma that followed me all, my, all the years of my life. You know what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean I'm crazy. I'm more sane than the sanest person out there. So get it right, okay? PTSD is not just from people that go into the military, went through wars and stuff like that. There's a lot of folks out here that's suffering with PTSD and they never even went in the military. They have traumas, past traumas, present traumas, all sorts of stuff. So don't categorize PTSD as a person that was in the military, okay? Because it's not just because you were, were in the military, you went to war and all that. Um, people that suffer with, People that schizophrenics, I believe that's from, from, you know, you're born with that. I believe you're born with that. Somewhere along the line in your genes, um, folks in your family suffered with that. You know what I'm saying? And I think it skipped generations. Yeah. But people with that, they definitely have to take medication. PTSD, not everyone has to take medication. I don't take medication. I'm not on medication. Um, you just have to learn to handle and cope with PTSD. Um, schizophrenia, I don't think you can handle or cope with that. So a lot of these um, patients or people that suffer with that, they need medication. They need medication. Because some of them, they, they really go off their rockers and they hurt people. They can kill you, they can harm you. And then they, they tend to forget what they did. I, I say 10 because I been around some folks that suffer with that, didn't realize it until the moment. But I do believe they know what they're doing. And because they know that they have that sickness, they play along with it, you know. And people that suffer with that, they don't get locked up. They, they take them to the hospital and, and lock them in for a little while, give them some treatment and stuff like that. And then they let them right back out. So be careful if you're dealing with family members or anyone suffering with that illness. Be very careful. And you have to be careful of what you say to them too. They, they know exactly what's going on. I'm serious. It's scary, but I'm serious. You have to be aware. And the ones that suffer with um, bipolar, them too. You have to be very aware of them. They know exactly what they're doing. Some of them take medication and some that take medication, they wouldn't tell you they take medication. Unless you are at their house or something 
and you run across it, if you run across strange medication, check the name out. If you have a phone, a cell phone, a smartphone, check the name, check the names out. Because I got caught up in, in two situations, not well two, but I've been in situations where I've been around people that suffer with schizophrenia and bipolar and didn't even know until you know me I'm a person I, I I watch people I pay attention to people I do and you know they 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 put on this act as though you might know them but you don't really know them they put this act on as though there nothing is wrong with them But being around them for a while, you're not going to pick up on it being around them for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like for a minute, a second or whatever. You have to actually live with these people. Live with them. Visiting them, you're not going to see the signs. You're not going to see it. They know how to hide it very well. But living with them, it's a freaking nightmare. A nightmare from hell. Cause you, cause if you're not paying attention, somewhere along the line, something is gonna come out. They can't hide it that well. They think they do, but somewhere along the line, you start to see signs. You start to see different ways they act. You listen to to stuff they say. One minute they are nice, next minute they are mean. They they have so many different ways of putting it out there but to them they think that the average person is not smart enough to catch on to it it took me all my life I've been growing up I've always heard people say oh this person is crazy oh he's nuts oh he's crazy I didn't I didn't know the terminology at the time I heard of it but never really took the time to read about it to see what it actually meant. So as, as the older I become, being here in the United States of America, and I believe in other countries like Canada, England, you know, those kind of places, you become more aware of all these illnesses because it's well known, it's put out there. Back in the islands and stuff, you don't hear about the terminologies that they use for these um, people. You'll hear, oh, this person is crazy or something like that. But they don't actually come out and say, oh, he suffers or she suffers with schizophrenia. Oh, or she or he is bipolar. Or they suffer with PTSD or whatever else that's classified mental illness. They'll just say the person is crazy. That's all. But here in America, I know for sure, they use those terminologies, the medical terminology, the real terminologies. So I started, I actually started reading upon them because I was actually living with someone that I didn't even think I didn't even think that this was wrong with the person that nothing was wrong with the person person has a degree smart they drive car they very smart but a little slip up and that's what brought me to the you know brought it to my attention I just noticed different things you know what I'm saying different ways the person would speak, the way they act, you know, the highs and the lows, you know, all this kind of stuff, you know. And then I started reading upon it, you know. I started reading upon it. I looked it up on the computer. I'm not all that computer literate, but I know the computer. Believe you me, I know it. And I started doing this. 
And you know, there were times when I was like afraid to, to, to freaking get on the computer. Like the computer was going to hurt me or something like that. It's just because I didn't know it. And there's a lot of people out there that act like that. But don't let that scare you. You can learn the computers. You don't have to be all good at it 100%, 90%, 80%. Just know how to get in and get out. Find what you need. I'm serious. But over time, you need to actually know it. Because everything is turning into computer, computer. You know, you have to know it. This is for the older folks. Because the younger generation, they know everything, you know. And they're lucky because they born in a time where all of this is happening. But the older folks, you know, it's hard. And we're scared because we didn't grow up with this computer age and all of that. So, you know... Don't feel bad or sad or, or, or feel stupid, call yourself stupid. Oh, I don't know this, I don't know that. Try to learn it, try to get into it. You don't have, like I just said, you don't have to be 80, 90, 100%, not even 70%. Just try to take um, little lessons, little classes. If you know anybody that has a computer, try to let them show you. Of course, people don't like to show you shit anyway, but there's some that will, you know what I'm saying? Try, try, to, try to get a little knowledge of it. I'm not the smartest person out there and I'm not the dumbest either. Try to get a little, a little knowledge of it, you know what I'm saying? And gradually you'll pick it up. Even your smartphones is a computer. Use your phones, you know what I'm saying? And you will get it, I'm serious. You can look up anything on your smartphone. You don't have to have the laptop, and uh, you know the other big computers, you can use your smartphone, believe it or not, because I do everything on my damn phone. I have a laptop and I don't even get on it. I don't feel like walking around with it, but my smartphone, I use my smartphone all the time. Believe it or not, when I was writing my book, everything was in here. I put it on paper and I did everything on my smartphone. I did everything on my smartphone seriously so I'm not lying to you and I wouldn't lie to you you can use your smartphone to do whatever you have to do and yeah this um mental illness the schizophrenia the bipolar whatever you know it's a slight difference but I think they both the same seriously but that's how I found out that this person suffered with that until eventually something really big happened and by texting the person actually admitted it to me you know what I'm saying because the person relapsed and they ended up going into the mental hospital Bellevue that's in New York and they actually told me the war they were on. Um, I wasn't familiar with the wards, you know, with the mental patients or whatever, but they actually sent it to me in a text. Cause you know, I always, I was always checking up on the person because you know, I really liked the person. I felt sorry for the person. And the family members, you know, family members, they knew. Family know all the time about this kind of stuff, but they don't tell people. Even if something tragic happened, they still don't say nothing. They keep it secret. And this seemed to be a secret that been going on for many, many, many years. But I cracked it open. Because I started pumping stuff out of the person, you know what I'm saying? It's like they trusted me. So they mentioned a lot of stuff. But a lot of stuff before they even mentioned it, I was getting dreams, you know, like I said, I dream stuff. And I was getting dreams about, about this um, alligator, a big alligator. And the tail was facing the door and the head was facing the window. And I spoke to a friend of mine, boyfriend, he's Jamaican, because Jamaicans seem to know a lot about these things and Haitians. And I told him my dream and he said, that dream means that you are living, you're living with, with danger. 
You need to get away from that person. And mind you, I didn't really want to live with the person at the time. I wanted to move from where I was moving because my rent was going up. And then I was told that my two brothers were trying to outslick me. They wanted to live with me but not pay rent. And I was just like running, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, how dare them do want to do something like that to me? You know, my honor life sister is who told me this. Because, you know, she used to always come out telling me stuff. Girl, you being so stupid. You know, you're the nice one. You always doing this and doing that for everybody. But they trying to get over on you. Thank you, Pam, you know, for all the little messages you used to be giving me. Even though I didn't follow half of them, but I got to see. Um, yeah, so you know, he told me that um, for the, no, she knew, well, she came close to me when my sister passed away. Because, you know, we were related, but we weren't in touch like that. And that's how we got close. But, you know, um, the sisters used to say we were like, I forgot to say it. Um, two peas in a pod. That's what they said. Anyway, I enjoyed being around this person. You know, this person was very adventurous. You know, they did things that I I never did. You know, I like to do, but I never actually like, like went out of my way doing it. You know what I'm saying? But this person, and that's another thing, people that suffer with bipolar or they're schizophrenic, they have this other side to them, you know, where they are very adventurous and all that kind of stuff. They mind tell them, you know, do this and they do it. And this person, I believe, had three or four personalities because that's what it seemed like to me. I think three because they call me three different names. You know what I'm saying? And I felt it was three personalities. But, you know, um... This person can be very nice at times, and then another times, oh my God, when they look at you, it's like their eyes can cut you up like the devil. So I had to be very careful being around this person. And I didn't move in with them because I wanted to. They asked me to move in with them because of the situation that I just told you about. She said, well, why don't you move? Why don't you move in with me? We can be roommates. I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I said, why don't you move over here? I have more space. But the person didn't want to move over there because too many people lived over there. You know what I'm saying? And they don't like being around a lot of people. This is people that suffer with bipolar and they're schizophrenic. They don't like being around a lot of people. And if they're around people, they're very discreet about it, you know what I'm saying? And they don't really, they don't really, I think the reason for that is because they don't want people to see or find out who they are. So, you know, they hide. That's what I believe. So that's how I ended up moving in with the person. But then afterwards, you know, I started seeing the signs and stuff. And at the time I was afraid to use the computer, like I said. And the person gave me a year to learn the computer. The person said, the person felt like, she felt like a sister, a mother, a friend, a real good friend. She felt like those three people to me. And I am, I am thankful for that and I don't hate her I disliked her at the time because I wasn't expecting that kind of stuff but what is there for you to expect even when you when you being around someone family or not you don't actually know how they are so you you start believing in them and have some kind of trust, but then afterwards when something happened, 
you know, you become aware you're scared and stuff. But this person, you know, they, like I said, they were telling me about the computer. So when I went to work, instead of taking my break for lunch, I used to go to the computer lab this other this other girl that worked with me well not in my department she came to the lab her name is cat i call her kitty cat she's haitian if you are watching my video um thank you for showing me that and big shout out to you i called you before but you never answered your phone it rang and it seemed like someone picked up but you never answered so anyway um, I hope all is well with you. But getting back to my story. Yeah. I wanted to show this family member that I was going to know the computer before the year. I wanted to prove this and show this to her. Because she had that amount of confidence in me. So I wanted to show her that I could do it. So she had a computer, so I used to get on the computer at work, like I said, on my lunch break. Instead of going to eat, I would get on that computer. Kat showed me just one, one afternoon how to get in and stuff like that. And then after that, every day when I had lunch, I used to go to the computer lab at New York City College of Technology in the NAM building on the ground floor. And I would do my thing. So I learned how to get in, find what I had to find, know how to turn it off and stuff like that. And even look around for other stuff. That's how I ended up putting, have getting me a email address and all of that, you know, and I got through with all of that. So I have that now, you know, in my memory and stuff. But yeah, you know, one day, one evening, you know, I was home and she came home because whenever she come home, you know, she used to wear these these shoes with heels and stuff, you know. And I could tell when she is in a different frame of mind because some evening she would come home and she the shoes would hit the ground so hard. You know, like when a horse is walking, the horse makes noises on the ground where well, her shoes used to hit the ground so hard i used to be like oh my god here comes crazy now i wonder what frame of mind she's in now you know what i'm saying that's what i used to say and i used to like i said i suffer with anxiety at the time i didn't know but i used to get the funny feeling in my stomach i used to get this scary feeling i started now being afraid of her and with the dreams i was thinking she was gonna her harm me or something like that because they can flip and f you up or kill you so I used to be praying to God, oh my God, please, I gotta find me a place. I gotta get out of here because I don't want this damn girl to kill me up in here. And then when the police come, she gonna say, oh, I don't know what happened. I didn't do that and all this kind of crazy stuff. So my butt was scared as hell. So I played it out, I played it out. But she told me I could stay there for as long as I wanted. I used, we split the rent, we split the bills. It wasn't a lot. And, you know, it was like she took my life from me because she used to want to drive me everywhere. She's a Libra. She wanted to drive me everywhere. I couldn't even take the train anymore. Only time I took the bus and the train was when I was going to work. But most of the time, she always wanted to take me here, take me there. I couldn't even go check out my friend that I used to check out. Um, Trudy on Nostrand Avenue. I couldn't even go check her out. You know, I used to go over there and chill and drink my beer and stuff. At the time, I don't drink anymore. But I couldn't even chill out over there. You know, she would get mad. She would call me if she come home and they see me. She started being with this control stuff, you know, like that. And I didn't like that because I don't like nobody controlling me. I don't. I don't control no one, so I'm, I don't appreciate that. But, you know, that's how those people that suffer with bipolar and they're schizophrenic, that's how they are. Anyway, they feel like you're, you're theirs. So, anyway, 
she came in that evening and I was on the computer. When I heard her, I, I hurried up and got off the computer because I knew she was in a frame of mind that wasn't nice. So I, I turned off the computer, but I didn't turn it off the right way. I just pressed the button and it went on, which means when she pressed the button, it's going to come back on. Everything I was looking at showed up and she did exactly that. She came and went to her room. Then it sounded like she was crying. You know, this is the kind of crazy stuff that used to be going on in this in this house. So I, my mind used to be like going crazy. Oh my God, what's wrong with her now? And I didn't know what to say because I didn't want her to snap on me or whatever. You know, I was like on pins and needles. Oh my God. Anyway, she came back out. She changed her clothes. Came back out because, you know, she always wear her house clothes, you know. That's that's a West Indian thing, you know. And first thing she went on the computer, I was like, oh, my God. When she opened it up, schizophrenia popped up. Who told me to do that? Now she knew I was, now she knew that I was on to her. She used to always call her sisters or they call her. You know, they act like they close, but they not really close. From being around them, you could tell that they not really close. But out in public, they pretend to people that they real, real close. But they not. They always argue, cuss each other and shit like that. But it's a big front that they put up. And if y'all are watching, I really don't care because it's true. And like the older sisters say, I talk a lot. Yes, I talk a lot. I don't really care. Anyway... I don't hate y'all anyway. Anyway, um, yeah. So apparently she told them, cause she, they used to talk, tell each other what was going on. So she had to have told them about me checking out this schizophrenia or bipolar, whatever it was, whatever one she's suffering with. And Next thing, she told me I had to move. So you know me, I flipped out because I was like, what? Well, you have to let me look for a place. I have to look for a place. You're the one that told me I didn't have to rush looking for a place. And now you're telling me I have to move? I said, okay, it's not a problem. I would look for a place. So it's like she wanted me to do it as soon as possible. So I was like, in my mind, I'm saying this fucking crazy bitch, excuse me for cursing, but Jesus. And you should have seen the piercing eyes. She had these eyes that looked like, you know, when you see a bear, how the bear eyes are just piercing. Well, that's how her eyes are. And she was just looking at me in this different. Oh, my God. It was scary. You know me, I'm not a punk. I was like, I stood there like I was this big bad person. Well, you're gonna have to give me time. That's what I said like that. And she's just looking at me like she gonna get ready to F me up. So I called my daughter and I asked my daughter if I could stay by her for a little while, you know. So my daughter was like, Ma, what happened? So I'm telling my daughter what happened, what she said. I was like, this is how I said it to my daughter. I was like, you know, this crazy bitch is telling me that I have to move right now. She the one who told me I could come stay here. I'm paying, I'm helping pay the rent and stuff like that. That was our agreement. And now, you know, so my daughter was like, Ma, shut up, shut up. I was like, no, I'm not gonna shut up. I said, no, you can't do people like that. You have to let them, give them time. And then she's telling me about a room. And I was like, a room? Why I have to be a room? I'm trying to find a one-bedroom apartment. Why a room? But she was just insisting on a room. I guess she wanted me to get a damn room or whatever. It was hard because I've been looking around. Even though I was living there, I, I, was, I was holding on to my money. And I was looking around. I was looking for a room, a one-bedroom, you know, something. But it was so hard finding place. And I can imagine now it's even harder. And I, I was looking on Craigslist and all that kind of stuff. She going to tell me, oh, don't be looking on Craigslist because, you know, they be having all these fake stuff. 
they'll take your money first of all i'm looking at her like why are you being so concerned about where i look you the one telling me to leave you wanted me you told me to come and then now all of a sudden i finding out about you you want me to leave but yes still you're still worrying about how i'm looking for it or where i'm looking for it you know why are you being so damn concerned anyway I try not to argue or whatever, you know, because I didn't want this bitch flipping out on me and shit like that. And God knows she would have effed me up because them people, they are strong. And if they are on medication, they're even stronger. I saw some medication in her house, but at the time, I wasn't smart enough to take my damn phone and look up the medication. She, I mentioned it to her sister because she, she was always traveling. She, always going somewhere never stay one place she works but she was always going somewhere so i used to be like well why are you um leaving like that you know is it because of me and stuff and she was like no i just don't like to stay one place you know you know i just like to go places and clear my mind then sometimes i would ask her when she get back she'll only go for not for a long period of time and i'll be like you know how was your trip what did you do Oh, nothing. I just stayed in the hotel and sleep. And at the time, I didn't realize that she suffered with mental illness. I just didn't know. And then, um, well, I, I, I realized it afterwards. So, you know, um, my daughter told me I could come stay by her. You know, my daughter was living out in Long Island. So I went over there. It was going to be a hike for me because work and stuff. I had to take the Long Island Railroad. But anyway, I did it, you know. My money was like running, 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 running like water because, you know, I had to, um, I had to actually, the railroad, then the train, then the bus, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, my money wasn't really running right for me. But I survived that. Believe you me, I survived that. That's something somebody would try to jump in the train tracks or whatever. All this crazy stuff was happening to me. I've been through so much in life. Oh, my God, people. So much. But look at me now. You know, I came through. So I'm just trying to say anybody out there that's going through any of this or living with people with mental illness or whatever, try to get away from them try to hang in there and get away from them because they would drive you nuts they would if they don't kill you they're gonna do some harm or something to you i'm glad that i'm still sane you know i still got a little bit of mind up here you know what i'm saying and i have a heart so that's another reason i just don't trust people i like being by myself i don't hate people like i said but I don't trust no one family or friend I don't trust anyone because these people hide their stuff they hide whatever is wrong with them but with you living with them you get to find out and like my friend told me when I told him about the dream with an alligator he asked me where was the head facing and where was the leg where was the tail I said the head was facing I said the tail was facing the window and the head was facing the door. So he said, and as I'm talking to you right now, I can see it. He said, well, that person is not going to harm you. They kind of like you. If the head was facing, if the tail was facing the door, that person would lash you real hard but just get out of there anyway. And thank God for the dream, that was a warning, and I got the hell on out of there. Even though when I was leaving and stuff, I told them I was leaving, they wanna know where I'm going and all this crying and stuff, wanna help me with my bags and stuff. And I, I just, you know, instead of being angry, I just felt sorry, I felt so bad for this person because I was like, oh my God, it must be so hard living, living with an illness like that. That's never gonna go away. You have to take medication and you have to, 
pretend, play these roles. And you know, um, I was gonna stop texting the person and stuff like that, get rid of their number. And when I was leaving, she told me, don't get rid of her number to text her. And I was like, why, for what? And they just told me, just keep it. So over the time, you know, I used to text the person and ask how they were doing and stuff like that. And that's when they came out and told me they were certified. They were in the hospital for what a month of time and stuff like that, you know. And it, it, it even made me feel worse. I was feeling so sad for this person. But I had to let it go and I had to move on because you feeling pity for, for people that suffer with mental illness, it's just going to destroy you. It's going to destroy you even more because the more you stay around them and help them, the more they're going to pull you down. Because today they one way and tomorrow they the, they the next. You just don't know. And it is draining. It is draining. So people, that's all I have to say for today. Like I said, I have a lot of stories. And they're real stories. That I didn't mention in my book. It's some things I didn't mention in my book because I didn't feel it needed to be in my book. I mentioned the most important things from when I was growing up and what happened to me as a child. So, I hope, well, I do believe the person is okay, but they not all there okay, you know. They're still the same, but they not, you know. But they actually moved out from where they were living at. They had to. And they lived back on Kingston with their sisters. Um, and you know me, I'm nosy. I was told that they moved there. So, you know, one day I was in the area and I went over there to see for myself. You know, to show my bad self after all that. So I went over there and I actually played a role and I got to see that they were living back there in the same little room they used to live in when years ago when their moms was alive and all that. So you see, you can knock me down a hundred times and by the grace of God, this bad sister right here still get up still gets up and I'm standing right now and I'm standing tall and looking good and I'm glad that I actually got the guts to bring that out you know because I I was kind of holding it back but I'm not holding it back any longer I don't care if like I said if the sisters is watching this on YouTube that's the deal. That's the story. And like I said, I don't hate you guys. But you shouldn't hide stuff like that from people. You shouldn't. You shouldn't because there are a lot of people out here that's suffering with mental illness. And they need help. And if... Good morning. Look at how she's so cute. She's smiling. Yeah, and if if you can help them, try. But the best way to help them is by getting medical help. You cannot actually help them yourself. Medical help. Seeing a therapist. She sees a therapist because she's one of the people that used to tell me I need to see a therapist. Yes. Actually, that was the first person that told me I need to see a therapist. They could see you're wrong, but they don't tell you they're wrong. So, I just want to say to anyone out there that's suffering with mental illness, I'm praying for all of you. Just seek help go see a therapist and for the family members the 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 
the bugs are oh attacking me they don't bite but they're just annoying the love bugs getting back and the family members it's nothing to be ashamed of nothing to be ashamed of this is not back in the dark days when people hide stuff and cover up this and that and that we're in 2024 getting ready to go into 2025 people you need to open up about whatever illnesses is going on in your families or whatever lives you know what i'm saying because everybody out here has something everybody out here is going to get something we all going to die from something we all born with something it was this this lady that used to work at new york city college of technology i don't know what nationality she was but she was caucasian i don't know if she's still alive now but she used to work in the Voorhees building. But she told me this years ago. Girl, everybody came in this world with something. And we're going to be all leaving out with something. You just have to learn to love yourself, take care of yourself, and everything will be all right. And I do believe that. Good morning. Okay. Okay. People are out riding their bikes, walking, exercising, walking the dogs like I'm here with Mr. Hustle. I've been out here for a while now. I love it. So, yeah, that's all I have to say. Have a great day, people. Because I certainly am. Oh, and by the way, for dinner, I had my favorite, well, one of my favorites. I went to this other Chinese buffet, but me and my granddaughters, we didn't eat and I treated them. We didn't eat and we, um, we ordered the stuff and we brought it home. But before that, you know, we took Mr. Hustle to the vet because remember I said his leg, his foot was, he was limping and my, my granddaughter was freaking out because she think she thought I, that I took him out and got and let him get hurt his leg. You know, she was freaking out. So she wanted to take him to the vet. So I was like, okay, you want to spend your money? I soaked his foot in Epsom salts and hot water, not steamy hot where it could burn him. And I used to put some bacitratin ointment on the bottom of it in between his toes. I think that helped because he's not moving like he was. But she still wanted to go to the vet because to her, she thought that she was still seeing that limp. So we went there first and he's good. There's nothing wrong with his foot. You know, this kind of dog, French Bulldog, they said, you know, allergy season, like, you know, they always have different kind of complaints and stuff like that. But from what they see, you know, he's okay. He just have a little ear infection, which he had from before. You know, I always give him his drops. So I don't know if he caught another one, you know, it's allergy season. So, you know, we continue and she said, continue on with the drops. So that's what I did last night when I got back. And before we came home, you know, we stopped into Ross. I wanted to run into Ross to get, you know, to see what they had. But they didn't really have much. So, you know, I got another brush, you know, the, the massage brush that you use when you're washing your hair. I got that for my daughter, you know, because the other one, water leaks inside. We still have that, but this one here, water cannot go in. And I replaced the other brush, you know, the one that you can comb, brush your hair. It's not a regular brush. It's one of those brush that don't pull your hair out. I replaced that because the teeth on the other one was breaking off and stuff. So I threw that out. And I got some, you know, some spray for the dog, you know, to like when, if he make a mess, you know, stain, it takes up stains and, and it has, um, a nice smell, you know, a nice scent to it. 
So I got two bottles of those. It was um, $5.99 from Ross. I usually get them cheaper at D's, but I wasn't, there was no D's in that area. So I just picked them up. And then we went to the Chinese buffet, like I said. I asked the girls if that's what they wanted because they claimed they wanted to get something to eat. I said, there's food at home. But you know, they wanted something from outside. So I treated them. And we came home and we ate. And you know, it was movie time because you know, we have movie times, you know. And then they went upstairs to their rooms and I stayed downstairs continue on watching my YouTube and stuff like that and then you know I was just in relaxed mode I had a pleasant night I was dreaming like crazy dreaming so much I saw people that I was in the military with I saw this girl that I was friends with she used to work at um, New York City College of Technology for a short period of time but she's on a live. I saw her in my dream. That was the second time seeing her. And I dreamt water, a lot of water, you know. And they said water. It was clear water, so you know. I looked it up, so you know. Clear water means rebirth. It's, it's a good omen. Rebirth and stuff like that. So... You know, I'm gonna go now. These bugs are attacking me. So, have a good day, people. Have a blessed day. This is JU Dash I saying, peace out for now. Don't forget to subscribe.